please welcome, oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this, Nora O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm fangirling you right back, my friend. Oh my gosh, I I can't I, I watch you every night. This is so surreal and so crazy. And you came on a very important day, the start of Cake Week, and all the week long, we're shining a light on special cake in the news, actually. Cake of the day. Let's try this animation. Cake Here we go. Of the day. Yeah, she's cute. Um, and today, it's the Smith Island cake from Smith Island, Maryland. And like, you made the cake last night? <laughs> well, look, I, I knew that this was gonna be the cake of the day. And I thought really the only cake that people in Maryland cared about were crab cakes. But it turns out the official dessert of Maryland is the Smith Island cake. And so I was like, all right, I gotta know what this is. So last night, what did I do? I got Grace, we got the pans, we went to the grocery store, and here it is. And so I can report to you, it's a lot of work making. I, we, we're supposed to be eight layers, only seven turned out well. But um, we made it and I had cake for breakfast. So oh, thank you, Drew. I love that. <laughs> and it's a cake that launched a thousand ships because for 200 years, fishermen took this cake by their, made by their wives usually on their annual oyster harvest and the fudge like kept it together and congealed without going bad when they were out on the boat for a long time. So that's the interesting fun fact about that. Now, speaking of food, you're married to Jeff Tracy and he is an amazing restaurateur. He owns six restaurants in Washington, DC. Um, you guys got married in 2004, is that correct? 2001, we were actually, and we've been together since we were in college. So That's right, you met at Georgetown. Yeah, so it's gonna be 20, 20 years married, I guess, in 2021. And um, we got together when I was 17 and I'm gonna turn 47 this year. I mean, it's, it's we're, we're, at this point, we're in it for the long haul. <laughs> I mean, what What is your advice to people? I always ask on this show, I'm sorry, this wasn't part of the pre-interview, but I'm always so curious, what is good advice for the long haul? You know, because we live in a society where uh, swipe left, swipe left, everybody's a little ADD and not investing as much um, mm -hmm. or knowing that they have the option to be free. And so, you know, they they sometimes get out. What do you think is the recipe for knowing you can make it through the long haul? It's a good question. I mean, the advice my mom had always given me was um, try and marry your best friend, marry someone who respects his own mother, you know, and loves his mother and treats her well. And then I think what's kind of kept us together is just, um, you know, we try and do things together. Like, um, you know, we in high in college, we used to say a couple of studies together, stays together. Now, now we kind of try and take a walk every morning if we can just, you know, non-pressured time together, you know, play golf together, something like that so you can just catch up. And then there's a lot of forgiveness involved in any relationship. I love that. <laughs> I just heard this, like, it, it was a Friday Night Lights quote. It's like, there's no sinning and forgiving. And I was like, yes, I so agree. Now, we're gonna go to a commercial break and come back and do some feel-good stories. And something I just wanna say is that I know that you are the managing editor of the CBS Evening News. So you are really the grand conductor of the content. And I know that it was a mission of yours to make sure that you balance the stuff we all must know to do our civic duties and be informed citizens of the world. But you also felt that it was important to give stories of hope and functionality. I always say that word just because, you know, why was that so important to you? Yeah, and I think you you said that well. It's like being a conductor and you have to have a great orchestra and team, which we really do have at CBS News and the Evening News. And, you know, part of what I said is we cover a lot of the hard news every day, um, but we have to do hard news and then do heart. And so we really try and cover stories that capture our common humanity. We did a story um, earlier this year about the soup man. His name's Peter Kelleher um, up in New Hampshire and New England, he's all over. He lost his son to opioid addiction who then became homeless. You know what he did? He got a school bus and now he goes around and feeds soup uh, to homeless people and gives them socks and toiletries. And so we went one day and, and helped him, you know, deliver soup. Um, we did a story on Biddy and Bo's coffee. A lot of people may know them. They now, they now employ hundreds of people with special needs. And the woman who started it, Amy Wright, she has two kids, Biddy and Bo, who have Down syndrome. 
And she was like, where are they going to work? You know, where, where, what's their future? Why don't we create a coffee shop that where special needs people can work? And it's the best coffee and the most amazing and beautiful people you've ever met in your life. And so those are kind of the stories we're trying to highlight every night on the evening news. Because my, my mom always said to me, if you capture someone's heart, you capture their mind. And so that's that's one thing I say. Every story we do, even the hard news stories, make sure we tell people's humanity. In it. And you use the word tone repeatedly in some of the things you've said in public about how you conduct your symphony of the news. And I so agree. As like a filmmaker, I always thought tone was my parameters. If I cared about the tone and the heart, everything else, the comedy, the action, like whatever, it would all work out around it.